Hello my good men, I am the Q-Muppet. Today, I will be doing a two-parter of Creepypasta. The two pasta I am reading are the sequels to Happy Pie, Fright House, Screamers, and Forensic. The versions I will read to you swell men are part of the true vision, which means the names are replaced, so Blair Maze is trust and yay. Now, here's Fright House, Screamers. Ahem. After the end of Happy Pie's blog, a post was made on November 18th. 2011, which led to a new blog by the original blogger, Roger Forstner. This time, the blog seems to talk about another missing Nickelodeon show, called Fright House Screamers. November 18th, 2011. First off, expect this blog to be, I'm expecting, four posts. Welcome to the Fright House Screamers blog. Unlike the previous one I owned, which was 54 or something posts, this one will be very quick, about five posts, but much more detailed than the Happy Pie blog. Now, when I asked Fright House Screamers. Fright House Screamers was a 22-minute show that aired on Nickelodeon on October 1st, 2000, and kept being aired every Monday until the show's extremely short end on the 15th. The show's plot was simple, four teenagers would spend a night at a haunted location. The show was very rushed, the entire filming, editing, and post-producing was done in a week. The teenagers were Tristan Ye, Jonathan Taylor, Jim Smith, and John Doe. Yes, you heard me correctly, Tristan Ye was one of the teenagers on Fright House Screamers. I feel sorry for the guy to be honest, he had to voice Happy Pie in all of the episodes, all of them, including season 3, had to be in a show that was cancelled after 3 episodes and died because of forensic. However, back to the point. How did I get the episodes this time? Well, when I went to Jim Forrester's house, right before the cops arrived, I found a DVD case with a sticky note that said this on it. To Roger, I hope you watch these episodes. They're the three episodes of Fright House Screamers, plus the footage shot for the abrupt fourth one. J.F. I took this home and put it in a spot to remember, so when Happy Pie was completed, I would bring out the DVD and play it. Well, since Happy Pie is done once and for all, I guess I'll give each episode a look. November 19th, 2011. The first episode was called Winchester and was about the teenagers going into the Winchester Mystery House. The intro showed the four in the Mystery House as paranormal things happened. Then, it cut to the episode. It showed Tristan sitting on a chair, saying, Today, we are going to go to the Winchester Mystery House. I'm Tristan Ye, and the person holding the camera is Jonathan Taylor. Hello, Jonathan. And Jonathan said, hello, Tristan. It then cut to a dashboard camera, recording a man driving a van, a first-generation Chevrolet Express, where the other teenagers were talking about the place they were going to. The man then said, hello, I'm Jim Smith, and I'm the oldest man in the group. It then cut to the van parking, in a parking zone, near the mystery house. Then, a man holding a camera, started to follow the teenagers as they entered the mystery house. Then, a man, most likely John, as he wasn't introduced, was talking to a woman about the house. She said, are you sure you want to go into the house? And John said, of course. Why would you want us to not go in? And she said, well, the activity here is higher than usual. I see broken dishes on the ground, damaged doors, and whispers coming from the hallway even though no one's here. And then John said, thanks for those warnings. We'll record what we find. Then, it went to the commercial break, and then the woman locked the floor in the house. It first cut to Tristan's camera. He was walking in a hallway with an impaired camera when he saw something move in one of the rooms. It was human-shaped and had a human heat signature. Tristan then ran to the door and opened it. Nothing was there. It then cuts to Jonathan's camera. He was doing an EVP session in a room, the session part shown in the episode I will transcribe. Jonathan, this is Jonathan Taylor, and we are doing an EVP session at the Winchester Mystery House. Are there any spirits currently in this room? No response, skips to 20 minutes in the session. Jonathan, we are about to leave the room right now. Is there anything you would like to say before we leave? Nearby door slam shut, then a spirit whispers something. Spirit, don't, please. Jonathan, I am quite creeped out right now. It then goes to commercials, and then it shows Jim's camera. He brings out a Winchester rifle and says, Are there any spirits in here? If so, does this make you angry? And no response is heard. He then sets a camera near the Winchester rifle and leaves the room. Then, five hours later, he comes back in and notices that the Winchester rifle was violently thrown against a wall. He takes the Winchester and camera and leaves the room. 
You might be wondering, where was John the entire time? He was in the van, getting results, from the other three. At the end of the episode, they looked at the footage of the camera, near the Winchester. They saw the Winchester being levitated, and it being thrown at a wall. Finally, the four thank the woman, and the credits roll. November 20th, 2011. The next episode was called, Myrtle's Plantation. It had the same intro, but also, had video parts, from this episode. It began, with Jim driving the express, on a highway in Louisiana, while he says, Today, on Fright House Screamers, we are going to go to the Myrtle's Plantation, a haunted plantation, in St. Francisville, Louisiana. It then cut to the express, going into the parking lot, and the four enter the lobby. They talk to a man, who just finished a tour, with a family, and gave them a tour around the plantation. After the tour, Tristan said, I just wanted to say this, has the plantation had any rise in paranormal activity? And the man said, yes. Yesterday, I was sitting in bed when I got a scratch on my arm. He lifted his sleeve up, and there was a scratch mark on his arm. Tristan then said, all right, we're ready to be locked in the plantation. And it cut to commercials. When it got back to the show, the man locked the plantation down, and Tristan did an EVP session at the stairs. Tristan, this is Tristan Ye, with Jonathan Taylor, and we are doing an EVP session at the Myrtle's Plantation. Is anybody here? A whisper is heard, which is replayed. Spirit, yes. Tristan, if anyone is here, tell me your name. Another whisper is heard, and replayed. Spirit, I'm William. Tristan, if you are the spirit of William Winter, walk up the stairs. Then, the impaired camera of Jonathan captures a human, shaped blob crawling up the stairs. Jonathan follows the blob, but it stops at the 17th step. Jonathan, Tristan, I just captured something walking up the stairs. Tristan, Jonathan, I think William might be in the house with us. Yet another whisper is heard and replayed, William, I am. Why don't you think so? Skips for 20 minutes. Tristan, we're leaving now. William, if there's any last words you'd like to say before you leave, then talk. William talks again. William, watch out. Then, a door slams, near the stairs. Tristan says, Jonathan, did you see that? And Jonathan says, I think there might be more than one spirit in the room. And Jonathan walks off, presumably to another part of the house. Commercials then start playing, and it goes back to the show. Jonathan sets a camera up, on a table, and lets it play. Five hours later, when the sun comes up, Jonathan finds the camera, on the floor. He picks it up, and gets out of the house. They then reviewed the footage of the camera that was knocked onto the floor. It starts out with nothing for the first two and a half hours. Then, a cold spot appears near the camera, and the camera then gets pushed off the table and onto the floor where it sits for the rest of the footage. Tristan says, I have a question. Why do you think there's more activity than usual when we film here? And John says, I don't know. I hope there's an explanation for this. Then the credits roll. November 21st, 2011. The third and final, completed, episode was called, Lizzie Warden House. It started with Jim driving the van, on a Massachusetts highway, and said, Today, on Fright House Screamers, we're asterisk sneezes asterisk, going to the Lizzie Warden House. And tells the story of Lizzie Warden. Then, the van pulls, up into the parking lot, and the four, enter the house. They talk to a man, who worked there, and gave them a tour of the house. After the tour, Tristan said, has there been any increased paranormal activity here? And the man says, yes. Last night, when I was closing the house down, I heard a whisper in my ear, and it was, you are not alone, and I ran out of the house as fast as I could. I'm not a very brave guy. And then Jim said, well, we're all here. Lock us down in the house. And it cut to commercials. After the commercial break, the man locked the house down. The four were placed around different rooms in the house. Tristan was stationed in the Lizzie Warden room. Jonathan was stationed in the Emma Warden room. Jim was stationed in the Andrew Warden room. However, John was in the express, as always. It first cut to Tristan. Tristan just stayed in his room and had cameras set up at points in his room that would record both impaired and normal footage. Tristan then said, Is there anyone here? And a close at door closed. Then, Tristan took one of the impaired cameras, and looked around the room. There was a cold spot in the closet. Tristan reached his hand into the cold spot, and it disappeared. Then, while walking back to the bed, he captured a humanoid heat spot outside of the house. Tristan called John, on the radio, and said, Hey John, have you seen a humanoid figure running, near the van? 
And Jean replied with, No, I haven't. I did see two glowing orbs outside though. And then it went to commercials. After the commercial break, it showed Jonathan doing an EVP session in the Emma Warden room. Jonathan, this is Jonathan Taylor in the Emma Warden room in the Lizzie Warden house. Is there anyone in this room as I speak? No response. Skips to 15 minutes later. Jonathan, Lizzie, if you're in this room, I want to ask you a question. Did you kill Abby and Andrew Warden? A whisper is heard and is replayed. Whisper, I'm not Lizzie. Jonathan, if there's someone else in this room, can you tell me who did the murders? Another whisper. Whisper, it wasn't Lizzie. Jonathan, we're going to leave now. Are there any last words you would like to say? A loud whisper is heard. Whisper, I-T-W-A-S-N apostrophe T-L-I-Z-Z-I-E. One of the lamps is thrown at Jonathan. Even though it was a lockdown, Jonathan just runs out of the room, down the stairs, out the door, and into the van where Tristan and John are. Tristan says, what's wrong? And Jonathan said, while I was doing an EVP, a limp was thrown at me. And Tristan says, oh, okay. Any second now, Jim should be here. And Jim walks out of the house and gets into the van. Jim said, I was scratched by a spirit. Lifts his sleeve up, and on his arm, you could see a newly formed scratch. After that, it cuts to when the sun rises. Jonathan gets all the cameras and looks at the footage taken in the room Tristan was in. Nothing unusual happens until the second the camera was turned off. A warm, humanoid spot could be seen in the corner. Until the credits, the four discuss why the paranormal things are happening. November 22nd, 2011. The fourth, uncompleted episode would have been called The Asylum if it had been completed. It starts out like normal, the teens are going to an asylum, the man there tells them an experience he had recently, and they get locked in. However, what I'm going to tell you is what actually happened that day. Most of the footage is complete, except for a few missing minutes. Tristan Ye is walking along a balcony with an impaired camera when he spots the same humanoid figure climbing a tree. He calls John and says, John, that humanoid is following us. Then, a scream is heard. Tristan then calls Jonathan and says, Jonathan, did you hear that scream? No reference. Jonathan? J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N? Tristan then calls John. John, Jonathan is not responding on the radio. And John says, this isn't good. You should get Jim. N-O-W. Tristan then says, okay, I'll get him. Tristan then runs down the hallway, saying, Jim, where are you? S-M-I-T-H. And Jim comes from another hallway and runs into Tristan. Jim then says, Tristan, I found Jonathan. He's dead. And Tristan says, what? And Jim says, I found him hanging from a hole on the fifth floor. Tristan then says, we need to find his body. And Jim says, no, it's too dangerous. Something is stalking us, and whatever it is, it killed Jonathan. And Tristan says, we need to get out of the asylum, now. And then they run all the way to the door, but it is shut. Jim swears, gets a chair, and rams at the door, breaking one off its hinges. They then run to the van, and John asks, what happened to Jonathan? And Jim says, he's dead. Something is stalking us. And he says, do you want me to call the police? And Tristan says, please do so. And so John gets a phone and calls the police. However, Tristan locks the door and gets a impaired camera out. Right before the police arrives, Tristan zooms the camera in on a shape that was standing on the balcony that Tristan was on. The figure was tall, lanky, and seemed to be looking straight at Tristan. Then, the police arrive, and they interview Jim, policeman, Jim Smith, where were you when you found Jonathan's body? Jim, well, I was walking down a corridor because I saw a cold spot move down the corridor when I saw something hanging from a hole in the ceiling. I got closer and I saw Jonathan's body. Policeman, what was the body like? Jim, there were some maggots crawling on his body. His neck was cut with a knife and he had scratches on his chest. And the surviving footage ends. You know, I think I know why Fright House Screamers ended so badly. You see, Tristan left Happy Pie to work on FHS, but Frederick wanted him to keep working on Happy Pie, so he had to kill Jonathan to end the show and force Tristan back into Happy Pie. I'm honestly glad Fred's dead now.